Welcome to another reaction video. Today we're going to interact with a conversation between uh, Russell Moore and Rick Warren on why he changed his mind, why um, Rick Warren changed his mind on women's ordination. As, as we go into this discussion, I want you to note uh, two pictures that are up here at, uh, in Russell Moore's office. There's a picture of C.S. Lewis uh, who wrote an essay can, uh, on priestesses in the church, a uh, compelling essay, which I think ought to be read, perhaps aloud, uh, in this situation. That's one side. But then, of course, there's Johnny Cash right below C.S. Lewis, who uh, had a big hit with a boy named Sue. So we're getting mixed messages here. I understand why people get upset about this, because I believed the way they did until three years ago. Mm. And I actually had to change because of scripture. Culture could not change me on this issue. <laughs> Antidotes could not change me on this issue. Pressure from other people would not change me on this issue. What changed me was when I came to con confrontation with four scriptures nobody ever talked about that I felt had strong implications about women in ministry. And nobody had ever shown it to me. Now, Great Commission, go make disciples, baptize, teach. You can't say, well, the first two are for men and women, the last two are only for men, or maybe just ordained men. That's eisegesis. It is not eisegesis to note who Jesus was talking to. To whom was the commission given? It was given to officers in the church, and it was given to the church at large, which of course encompasses women. Of course, women are involved in it. Of course, the Apostle Paul had many women who were co-laborers with him in the gospel. So, of course, but that's not that doesn't address the question of orda or ordained office. That's right. You, you got a problem. Who authorized women to teach? Jesus. All authority is given to me. Therefore, teach. Therefore, 10-year-olds get to baptize. <laughs> right? Can 10-year-olds become Christians? Can they be... Well, maybe they should serve the Lord's Supper. Maybe eight-year-olds should serve, serve the Lord's Supper. To say otherwise would be eisegesis. Anybody who, anybody who can receive baptism, anybody who can believe the gospel it, and is ushered into the New Covenant community, that person is authorized to preach and teach. He doesn't have a problem with boy preachers. Uh, let's, let's leave aside the question of uh, men teaching and women teaching. Let's talk about boy preachers. Let's talk about little girl preachers. Can we do that? All authority is given to me, therefore baptize. You got a problem with the Great Commission. I had to repent when I actually looked at the Great Commission. Mm. I had to say, it's not just for ordained men, it's for everybody. It is for everybody to share the gospel, of course. A, a, a 10 year old girl can share the gospel with one of her playmates. That, the, the, gospel is not, the gospel is not locked up in a box where only ordained uh, men can uh, share the gospel with people that they, companions and friends and whatnot. Of, of course not. But that what, we, what we see here is a lowering of the expectation of ordination. Not a, this is not raising women. This is lowering ordination. On that day in, at Pentecost, we know women were in the upper room. We know women were filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. We know that women were preaching in languages that other people couldn't hear to a mixed audience. How do we know that third one? Yeah, we know that there were women in the upper room because it says that they were. Uh, we know that the Spirit fell on them because it says. But when it says who preached, no women. We know women. It wasn't just men. Women were preaching on the day of Pentecost. How do we know that? Because Peter felt obligated to explain it. <laughs> That's called mansplaining. So, <laughs> so when someone had to explain it, who'd they call? <laughs> They called a guy. The very first Christian sermon, the message of the gospel of good news of the resurrection, Jesus chose a woman to deliver it to men. He had Mary Magdalene go and tell the disciples. Now, that clearly wasn't an accident. I agree. It wasn't an accident. There's all sorts of typology going on there, which exegetes have recognized for years and years and years, oh, like forever, but it has nothing whatever to ordination to office. So why, why when 
uh, after sending Mary Magdalene to deliver the message to the apostles and the world is made new, why are there no women apostles? Why? Why didn't they, when, when they had to replace Judas, why didn't they take the first step toward equity? Why didn't they? Why didn't they say, you know, we've been living in this patriarchal old covenant for so long, we almost slipped up. We almost appointed a man. It was an intentional. It's a whole new world, baby. And yet, 12 apostles, 12 men. And then you have one of those apostles, Paul, later on, saying, I do not permit a woman to teach or have authority over a man. So how about that? Women didn't get to talk in, in, in the service at Corinth. How about that? And if they prayed or prophesied, they had to do it with their head covered. How about that? Does, does Rick Warren believe that a woman can be a preacher so long as she has her head covered to show submission to her husband? Is that what he believes? Let's all of Scripture together. All of Scripture has to harmonize. Now he has a woman go tell the apostles. You got on, Can a woman teach an apostle? Evidently did it on the first day. He chose her to be the first preacher of the gospel. There's a difference between telling someone something and getting up behind a pulpit, opening the word of God, and saying, hear the word of the Lord, ye sinners. Where do you get from sharing the news of an empty tomb to preaching? When you go, when you go out to a crowd and you're declaring the preaching the resurrection, that's a particular verb. You're preaching the resurrection. But when you, what you're, when you are within the entourage of Christ's followers and you are delivering the news, uh, the the couple on the road to Emmaus are likely a husband and wife team, a man and a woman, and when they go back and. Uh, give the news to the, uh, the, the disciples in the upper room. Did they say, oh, uh, everybody have a seat. I'd like to set up the chairs in rows. We have, a, we have a message we want to deliver to you. Or was it simply news? 